Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Sometimes a guy just got your number. A lot of people have my number. Manny Machado is one of those people that has my number. So we're gonna break down a Manny Machado homer off of me and the backstory behind it, which is really kind of funny. I call this crisscrossing the corner. You know, tunneling is a crazy concept. There's no way a big leaguer swings at that. If this ball's one to seven, he absolutely crushes it. Boom, that's the breaking point. At this point in my career, Manny Machado has about 12 homers off me in five at bats. Uh, he's also hit four doubles and probably three singles, an average exit velocity of 175 miles per hour. Something like that, pretty close, not actual stats, but, uh, but pretty close. So going into this game, and this is important for the whole, for the whole story, going into this game, I'm joking around with all my buddies in the clubhouse, Clev and Lindor and everybody. And I'm like, you know, Machado's the Holy Ghost. He's just, he's that guy for me. He just gets me every time, all this different stuff. And so they're making fun of me. I'm making fun of myself. And uh, I say, you know what? Every time I face him, he hits a homer off me. And they go, well, what pitches are you throwing him? I said, well, they're mostly fastballs. And I said, well, you're an idiot. Haven't you tried to throw him off-speed stuff? I go, yeah, I threw him a curveball. He hit it through the wall. Uh, I've thrown him a slider. Uh, he doesn't swing at it. I, I've tried to throw him a changeup, and he hit a double down the line or you know, st stuff like that. I've tried everything. I can't get him out. Uh, but this is 2018, and I had just developed my new slider. So uh, that's a slider that he hadn't seen yet. And actually, this game was before it really started clicking. This was a game or two before I really got the feel for it in-game and got it to start moving like it was in the end of 2018 and like it does now. Um, and that one pitch is really what propelled me to having a great 2018 season. There's, there's other things, obviously, but having that wipeout pitch was big. So going into this game, I say, you know what? I'm just not going to throw him a fastball. I'm just not going to give in. If he beats me on off-speed stuff, I'm just going to go with that, and uh, we'll see how it plays out. So with that being said, that's the backstory coming into this game, and it picks up bottom of the first inning, two outs, play it through. Curveball, curveball. Curveball. A. That's not bad. I'm thinking in my head right there, wow, I got him out. Then we go slider, 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 and ah. That ain't it. That's exactly what always happens to me. And this shot, I left it in there on purpose because you can kind of see the start of a really funny sequence of events. Uh, I've actually looked for the video many times, uh, and they don't have it on camera, but I'll explain that when I get there. So, uh, I feel like I don't really need to do this, but uh, Manny Machado is hot here against me uh, on every pitch and will not swing at anything Uh, about there or anywhere else out here. So I basically have this little zone right in here where he'll swing at fastballs occasionally, but he will also hit those. And then I've thrown him curveballs that end up here. I've thrown him fastballs up here, here. I've thrown him cutters over here and and it just change ups like down in here and away and they all go for hits or homers or whatever. So I really have no attack plan against him in this at bat other than just I'm going to throw curveballs and just it's my best off speed pitch and just see what happens. So first pitch, uh, he's up there thinking I can't wait to hit. And so we get a little bit of a little bit of a trigger here. He's clearly looking to hit. You can see the hip and the hands go. This is an auto take. He just identifies it as a ball. Uh, also coming into this game, I, I heard something coming into this game that he is uh, he was on fire for like the last week and a half. He got really hot. I was like, oh, great. Like he needs to be on fire even more when I face him. Perfect. So anyway, second pitch here. We go curveball. Really well located. Um, he has hit that pitch before on me. but uh, And you can see he's right on this. 
as far as like the barrel goes. It just gets a, it gets a little bit below the barrel mainly because he's out in front. Uh, he's right on it there, and then he's a little bit ahead of it right there. And you can see the typical uh, hip goes, and then like the arms kind of reach, and you get this bowing of the back. Typical out in front, and then kind of off balance and going this way after the out in front swing. So that's what tells you he's out in front there. And then we come back with the pitch that should be hit. 800 miles uh, and we get away with it. So this is a curveball. that's just basically, it's outer half, but it's just, I mean, middle of the zone. And he's just way out in front of this. I mean, he gets it right off the end of the bat. You can't really see it on, on film, but he gets it right off the end of the bat. It's got a lot of spin on it. And he's just like, ah, I missed it. Berto's like, we might actually have a chance to get him out. What is this? I'm like, ooh, yes, free out. Let me get over there and get that. And uh, you can see here, you know, man, if you watch his head, he's like, he leans his head over here. Like, he's frustrated. Just watch right there. He knows he missed a pitch. He's like, ah. Kind of tosses the bat away. And we get the out. So... I go in the dugout, that was to end the first inning, and I'm celebrating. I'm like, yes, I got him out. This is unbelievable. My plan worked. I don't know how that happened. And Lindor's like, oh, you're not even going to throw him a fastball at all? Are you really not going to throw him a fastball all game? Not a single fastball? I go, no, I'll be an idiot at some point and just think I can sneak a fastball by him, and he'll probably hit a homer. But, yeah, I'm going to try, but I'm, I'll probably be an idiot at some point. And he just laughs at me and walks off. He's like, you're an idiot. I'm like, yeah, I know. So, anyway... We go out there for the fourth inning. Uh, haven't given up a hit yet. Been rolling pretty good. And here we go. Uh, first pitch. And this, uh, the reason I pointed out that he, there was some buy-in on the first pitch that I faced him on the curveball is this one looks like an auto take to me. He's just looking to get his foot down, just looking to see the ball. Has no interest in swinging at all. And so now he sees this pitch that starts off like a fastball somewhere out here. If you look at the trajectory of this pitch out of my hand, it starts off going basically towards like Berto's center line, which is over the plate. And then this pitch drifts away, whereas my fastball would normally run back this way a little bit and end up basically dead center. So this pitch starts off in a location that he would be looking to swing. And that's why I say like, he just has no interest. You see the hips are actually going the opposite way of opening up. If you watch this here, he's foot's down and the hips are actually just, they're not opening at all. He's just bringing his hands down. He's auto-taking this pitch. But now he's seen the slider and he knows that I'm attacking him with off-speed stuff. So then we come back with another slider. And this one, again, same thing. It starts off a little bit higher, but it starts off like it's going towards Berto's mask, where normally my fastball would run back this way middle and end up kind of in this area up here for belt high heater. Um, and so here you see then the hips, the hips trigger. They're actually rotating this way. Uh, you see the hands are delaying. He's going to swing at this pitch, and then he realizes, oh, that's not a fastball. It's sliding away, and he throws the brakes on. Um, missed by just a, a little bit, but with the movement of this pitch, like, that generally creates a swing for me. Uh, maybe not a swing and miss, but most guys that creates a swing. But after seeing it the first pitch and being up in the count, as soon as he identifies it's slow, he's taking it regardless. And I miss a little bit, so now we're 2-0. Come back here again. Uh, this pitch is, is now way off, but if you look at the initial trajectory, it's heading out towards this part, which would still be you know, over the outside corner. Fastball runs back this way, still in a good hitting location. 2-0 count down here, so he's clearly looking to hit. And then again, you see the hips. You see the hands, and then he just throws the brakes on here. He realizes that's a, that's a ball. Uh, and now he gets an account that is 3-0. Uh, what's important here is we're up 1-0, and there's one out here. And I don't really want to walk him to put him on first base. Uh, he can't do that much damage to me here. He can just tie the game. It's one run, even if he hits a homer, uh, which obviously is what ends up happening. But in my head, I'm like, okay, well, it's 3-0. He may be looking to walk. Um, he's seen three off-speed pitches, this at bat. He's seen three curveballs the at bat before. So I'm thinking, okay, he's kind of slowed down. And I've seen him triggering at these and like kind of looking out over here. He's seen everything away. 
So now I'm thinking, okay, I'll just, I'll throw a fastball kind of up in here. And if I get a strike, maybe he swings at it. Uh, there's no way he's going to be on time for it because he's seen off-speed pitches. So I've, he's slowed down. This is what's going through my head. Uh, he slowed down. I'll get there. Maybe I'll get a pop-up. Maybe I'll get a broken bat. Uh, as I know, these sliders have been starting out here and running this way, and they've been slow. So maybe if I start a fastball in the same location and run it this way, let me get a different color. If I start a fastball over here and run it this way, I may get in on his hands and get a positive result on a 3-0 count. And then, yeah, I just forgot who's at the plate, basically. Because uh, that's obviously just never going to work. And I want to illustrate, this is where the glove is. This is probably where I should have tried to go. But I'm, going, I'm trying to execute in this zone where the glove's at. And we get the ball right into that zone. I mean, the glove does not move at all. I execute this pitch perfectly into his barrel. So here's what I was talking about. The fastball starts off kind of out here, and you can watch that run back. And where it actually ends up, you know, if, the, if he doesn't catch this ball out front, if he catches a little bit deeper, this ball is going to end up probably right about here, which isn't quite in this zone. Remember I talked about the zone in here that I have where he'll swing and sometimes off the plate. So this ball doesn't quite get to that zone and it doesn't quite get above the zone where you can beat him sometimes. And so it ends up right in the barrel. Does a really good job. I mean, he, if you look at the integrity here of spine, and how he rotates around this, like it never deviates. I mean, that's fantastic. Look how still the head is there with all this rotation going on. If you just watch his head, it foots down there and then the head literally never moves. Just tracks the ball and then right when he's putting the finishing touches on it, the head moves just a little bit. Elbow draws in really well. Generally a sign when you beat a hitter is his elbow will draw in. Um, this one, he's just pulling his hands inside of an inside pitch. Does a really good job. Gets full extension through. Uh, is able to direct his hands through the ball instead of kind of coming out and around this way. All, all stuff that just makes him a really good hitter. But th what's really impressive about this swing is if you look at the hips and how violently they're rotating, and you look at the hands and how they have to pull in, and the foot, the front foot right here, it's rolling and there's, there's all this movement going on to get to this, to get the barrel of this pitch. And while all that movement is going on, his head is just dead still. Look at that. Pretty powerful stuff until after he's already contacted the ball. It's the first frame where it moves. Uh, so a lesson to be learned here uh, for young hitters, young pitchers, even in the research I've been doing recently on command, the longer you can maintain eye contact with your intended target, either the glove or the ball, if you're a hitter, uh, the more you're going to be able to hit your spot. So as a pitcher, that's hitting the glove. As a hitter, that's positioning the barrel on the ball in a location in a, in a way that's going to be beneficial for you. And his spine stays extremely. Uh, the, the integrity of his spine is great. There's no rounding. I mean, if you look at where his, let me draw a little bit better line. So the center of his. So we are. His front foot is down here. Here's probably the center of his mass, right about here. And here's his head. So if you draw a line straight through those and you just watch him rotate around this, I mean, that ends up middle of the belt buckle, middle of the head with all this rotation, all this power going on. Really impressive stuff out of Manny. Um, and we get this missile. I mean, this ball is... The ball flies in Camden, sure, but this ball has just hit really, really hard. And now the funny part comes. So here he is, rounding, rounding second. And if you watch me over here, watch my head. As soon as my head picks up, where do I look? Right there. Head's picking up, looking directly out to, nope, not him, right to Lindor. Lindor's shoulders are like kind of slumped a little bit. 
he's laughing right now. Like he's got this big smile. You can see his teeth <laughs> from miles away. Um, incredibly white teeth. So whoever does his dental work, doing a great job. But uh, he's laughing at me right now. I mean, he knows Manny as well. So he probably, there's probably something said, or some look exchange here between him and Manny as he's rounding the bag. He's laughing because of the conversation that we had earlier where he's like, are you gonna throw him all off speed stuff? And I said, no, I'll probably be an idiot and throw him a fastball. So as soon as my head picks up right here, I look at Lindor and you can see, watch Lindor, right before it cuts, you see his head, let me get rid of this, you can see his head tilt. Ah, right there. He just tilts his head, like what are you doing? You can see the shoulders slump a little bit, just this, this little movement right here. <laughs> He's laughing. So after this, it cuts away from it, uh, but you know, Manny, Manny continues to round third base, and right about when Manny's over here, Lindor goes down into a squat position. That's a, yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to draw. Lindor goes down into a squat position and puts his glove over his face and is just like, has his head in his, in his glove just laughing. I, I look at him and I see him kind of give me the head tilt and I go, eh, I give him a shoulder shrug and a head tilt back and then he just starts dying laughing, puts his glove over his face, just, just laughing at me. So that's, uh, that's some of the little communication, the game within the game and competitors going out there not wanting to get beat but understanding that sometimes like, I don't know what to do. I guess I could have thrown him some sliders for strikes, you know, maybe gone back to the curveball, but he's hit everything I have. So that's, uh, that's the homer that Manny hit off me and the inside story. I came into the dugout after this inning, got absolutely roasted by Clev, by Bieber, by just everybody. Like whoever was there was roasting me. Uh, Zimmer, Naquin. I mean, just everybody, just absolutely roasting me in the middle of a game. So some of the little things to get you through a season, uh, some of the little communications, the subtle body language communications going on between players on the field, some of the backstory, all that different stuff. And Manny just being a really elite hitter, uh, the head, the spine, like the way he rotates around it and keeps his eyes locked on the ball is just really, really impressive to me. So I wanted to point that out as well. But uh, that's today's episode. That's the Holy Ghost, Manny Machado doing Holy Ghost things and taking me 4 or 50 dead center. Just make a meme out of that. Anyway, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. That would really help me out trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2020. I'm trying to help as many kids learn the game and fall in love with the game as possible. So if, if someone hasn't seen this channel yet, if you could share it, for, share it with them, that would be great. It would help me out. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you want to see next. What hitter you want me to break down next what you thought of this breakdown and have a great, great day. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.